Thank you so much, Sean. Welcome everyone to the first panel of two panels you're going to be jumping into with me this evening. This first panel is called How Ubisoft Toronto Brought Watchdogs Legion to Life. Joining us, we have creative director Clint Hawking, Liz England team lead game designer, and lead writer Cameron Levine. Listen, this game is ambitious, obviously. I'm sure everyone watching this panel right now knows just how ambitious it is because, well, we're gamers, and when we heard play as anyone, we kind of I don't know, lost our minds a little bit. Like, how was this possible? So before we get into the specifics of everyone we can play, uh, let's find out just how we get, get into this world, a little bit more about the story, okay? So Clint, uh, take it away. Who are we fighting and uh, what are we fighting for? Uh, Watch Dogs Legion is set in a, in a near future version of London where, uh, you know, Criminals and authoritarians have kind of taken over. Um, the economy's collapsed. Uh, people are displaced. Uh, unemployment's on the rise. Automation is taking over. Really kind of a, a worst case scenario of uh, a lot of the trends we're seeing in the world today. And uh, your mission in Watch Dogs Legion is to, to uh, build a popular resistance to fight back uh, against the emergence of the authoritarian regime and, and take back the city for the people of London. Uh, and to do that, um, you know, you can walk through our open world simulation and any person that you see in the open world, you can profile them, you can hack into their lives, you can figure out what their, you know, challenges and, and problems are, and you can help them with their problems and win them over to your cause and recruit them into your team. And anybody in in the open world can be, you know, you know, your next playable character, the hero of your game, the star of your story. Yeah, you make it sound so easy. Sure. Um, Liz, <laughs> <laughs> who, who would you see on the team? Who was it that was like, hey, um, I have this brilliant idea. I've never been done before. OK, uh, let's make a game where you can play as any person, anybody that you see walking around. Just tap into them. It won't be hard. Um, yeah, we can do it. So like, was it Clint and how much do you hate him? It was Clint. Oh. Uh, we'll answer the other half. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, when I started on this project early on, uh, the play as anyone goal, that pillar, was already like, yes, we want to be able to profile every single person, fully generate everything about this person, their backstory, their schedule, who they are, their personality, everything, um, and then be able to play as them. And uh, because... I'm either I like a challenge or I'm hopelessly naive. I was like, sounds good. We'll, yeah, we'll try. Sounds like sounds um, like a Liz-shaped problem to me. That <laughs> was very much of a Liz-shaped problem. Um, I was just excited to be able to be like, okay, cool. Let's 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 see what that looks like when you break down that like big complex. It doesn't even sound very big complex. It's just oh, you just play as anyone. It sounds really simple. Uh, and then, like, on the development side and on the technical side, it's like, okay, what does that actually mean? And then spend five years breaking that down and solving all those problems it uh, created. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you guys still make it sound easy, but okay, it was, like, it was just five years. No, it was five years of long, hard work, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but you still oh, love yeah. each other at the end of this? Yeah. yeah. I guess so, yeah. We're still friends. We're still talking. <laughs> Okay, that's good to know. That's all I wanted to hear. Um, well, let's dive a little deeper into the narrative rabbit hole, okay? Because obviously there's a lot of it here. I heard there were over 2 million words written or something like that, Cameron. I know you and Clint have a history of writing characters who have an endgame here. So how exactly do you do that? How do you create all of these characters? I mean, yes, I guess it's just a lot of writing, but there's a lot of different backstories here that you guys need to craft. Yeah, so I mean, it's like a it's a really ambitious team of writers who uh, were ready to like jump into this and um, determined to make some really memorable characters that you could discover in this world. And uh, you know, in my opinion, we we totally did it. But yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of words, a lot of uh, a lot of recording of actors in London. Um, uh, a lot of learning how Londoners talk, <laughs> um, and um, you know, basically just uh, uh, creating the kind of pieces that we're going to, you know, eventually be put, put together uh, to to uh, flesh out these characters that we wanted people to discover on their own. Obviously, in our real world, we have the similar archetypes, right? Like we have a similar kind of people that we might see around or we might have the same kind of hobbies or love the same things. Are we going to see any kind of like duplicates like that in personality or types of things that they might be into when we're walking around London? I mean, we definitely identified some, you know, sort of uh, 
archetypal, you know, uh, London personalities, you know, that if I was playing a game in London, I would feel ripped off if I wasn't able to find that person, you know. Um, so, uh, sure, there's like definitely some some common um, types that you can find in the world, but I think there's also a lot of surprises. And when you kind of like add all the different elements together that we use to create a character, uh, to create characters, um, you can get some very unique um, combinations that uh, surprise even us when we play the game to this day, you know, so, which is pretty cool. I can love hearing that, that you guys have been working on this for five years, but you still have something that surprises you every time you oh. jump in, which is obviously such a unique experience for gamers to know and that we'll be able to own this game and still jump back into it and have such a unique opportunity to tap into so many different characters. For me, I like to kind of own my character. I want to be able to feel like I can identify with them in some way. Do we have those kinds of pulls with these characters? Like, do we, are we going to love them that much? Are we going to hate them that much? Like, what do you see? How do you see a gamer kind of following their storyline? I mean, I think it's going to be different for everyone. Like, like um, I definitely, every time I play, I have you know half a dozen characters that I kind of play more and bond with more strongly than than others but it's not the same um personas it's not the same archetypes that I'm you know identifying with every time sometimes it's about how they look and then I get interested in in the character uh because of the you know because of their hair or because of the way they're dressed and then and then I um experience their personality through the scenes and the dialogue and and get to appreciate that character more but then maybe the next time i'm playing the game or another part of the game it's a different character i think that um um you know there are still parts of the game many many parts of the game where i haven't seen most of the characters um that can occur kind of engaging with those parts of the story and when i see new stuff it's it's always great i think there's a lot there's a lot to find in there for sure there's also like a really strong bond that I think forms for players when they pick their hero, you know, like their heroes um, that, you know, um, all the kind of like uh, beautiful storytelling you can you could come up with might not be able to really compete with in a lot of ways, like to be able to just have that kind of agency um, builds, I think, like an instant identification with that uh, with that character that um, has helped us helped us a lot with our players. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that so much. Uh, I feel like obviously you guys have an affinity for your own game. You've been playing it. You've been living with it, right? It's your baby. So when you are watching, because you obviously bring in play testers as well to come and experience it. When you're watching them experience your game for the first time, what is the kind of vibe that you're getting from them? I mean, I think, uh, you know, we see pretty clear trends over the last, um, you know, four or five or six months in our in our sort of last wave of play tests um, where, where players come in and, you know, it's you know, Watch Dogs has always been a a game with a lot going on. There's a lot of you know hacks and tools, and there's a lot of controls, and you can drive and you can shoot and you can you know climb and run and like all of the things that you can do. It's a lot, so it's got a pretty steep learning curve to begin with. And then when you take on top of that the learning curve of like switching characters and you know kind of like you know that the gameplay of like line matching, like getting the right the right teammate out for the right situation and all of those um, challenges. Are, it's a lot. Um, but we do see a very clear trend of like after, you know, four or five, six hours, the appreciation just goes right, like right through the roof. Like players really, once they get into the, into the flow of the game and the groove of the game, they really, really, uh, identify with it. We can see this already. in a lot of the previews that are starting to drop now, you know, people who'd maybe played the game for two or three hours back in the summer, um, and then playing it again now. And they're like, yeah, now that I, now that I get the groove, like I, this game's amazing. And so it's very exciting to see. We're really excited. Well, there's obviously, I mean, there are many layers, right? Many roads that have, need to be paved here to make sure this all works well and, and everything comes to, comes in order uh, with all this ambition, right? So um, how exactly are we going to be able to get around? How do we manage all of this? I just feel like it's a lot. Like, what kind of tools are you arming us with here? Oh, arming you as the players? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, like, one thing, and we kind of touched on to it a little bit with, like, who are you actually recruiting onto dead tech and how important that is to like an individual player because one of one of the things that we we 
we almost take for granted now is that we don't tell the player who's cool in the world or who they should recruit. We let the players pick themselves. So one of the things we look at is like, okay, what is cool about this person? Is it they have a cool name, they have the same name as me, or they're doing something cool in the world. Uh, maybe it's the way they talk or the way they walk or the way they're dressed. Maybe it's their occupation. Um, maybe it's like you start profiling these characters and looking into them and like looking at their backstories and looking at all these different layers of systems we added, for example, like knowing what their activities are, what is their schedule, what do they do in the evenings for fun? Um, is it they go to drink, do they go do fitness, or do they go like vandalize the museum, right? Like what are the things that are cool about this character and like what do you what do you latch on to? And like what are their relationships? What kind of people are they involved in? Are they married? Do they go and um, relax with their grandmother every day, right? Like oh, that's really cute. The grandma is a blackmailer. Like, you never know exactly what kind of <laughs> what characters you're going to run into in the, in the game. Um, and then we like add, like all these are more and more layers of systems to try to just flesh out these characters from top to bottom. So that it's not just a character you see on the street, oh, they're cool, I want them on my team. It's the character on the street, oh, they're cool, maybe I want them on, their, on my team. Let me learn more about them. Um, and then we also give them all like character traits, right? So, um, because people pick characters for all kinds of arbitrary reasons, all of which are excellent reasons, and I'll never judge anyone for choosing anybody for any reason whatsoever. Okay, um, sure. But like, if you're recruiting a lawyer onto your team, we're like, okay, what is well, it? Well, maybe not a lawyer, maybe not a lawyer. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's too far. Oh, no, okay, all right. Um, an accountant. <laughs> Is that okay? Almost an accountant. That's a TikTok <laughs> meme that we shouldn't get into right now, but yeah, okay, an accountant. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you're recruiting these characters onto your team, like what is it about that character that like, what can they bring to DeadSec? Because if you're playing as anyone, like what is it about that person that like we can bring onto the team? So like we have a lot of like cases like, oh, you have a construction worker. Okay, what do they come with? They have their construction uniform and you can dress up as them and sneak into construction sites without alerting um, the enemies and you can call a cargo drone and maybe you have a wrench or um, a nail gun and all those sort of things and if you're like me and you recruit that accountant that I mentioned like then it's like okay well they'll they'll get me more crypto and I'll recruit a fashion designer because they'll get me discounts at clothing shops and then I can just mm. buy all the vanity items I always want to buy. Um, and so like trying to give these characters like a little bit more of a like purpose on your team and like things about them that will draw player interest and uh, give you sort of like that extra, oh, that's cool, right? Like I kind of want this person and now I have more reasons to want this person. Sure, you want to like round out your repertoire of yeah. army, I guess. Yeah. But is there a limit to the amount of people that you can recruit? Like, what size is too big in your opinion? So there's, um, a, there's a hard limit in the game of, okay. 40, of 40 people that can be on your team. Um, uh, but I think, actually, you've already hit the practical limit for, like, how many people you want on your team once you get to 20 or so. Um, uh, I usually have about 20, 25 people on my team. I'm pretty aggressive about recruiting when I play. Um, uh, the game remembers many, many, many more than that, though. So just because you can pe put people on your team, the game still keeps track of hundreds, many hundreds of people and their relationships and lives and all of that stuff. So uh, the world, you know, the more you play the game um, and the more people you know and make connections with, the the, more, the richer the, the population becomes. I love that. So robust. Uh, let us now dive into in the little segment, okay, that we're going to call Watch Dogs Legion. Um, I, well, basically, I'm trying to I'm trying to set up a situation where we can talk about farts, but in a very classy way. Okay. <laughs> so our next episode is Watch Dogs Legion, a collection of backstories, personalities, and farts. So we're going to ease our way into the flatulence by just talking about some gameplay traits that might enrich PAA. Who wants to dive into that? <laughs> well, some people are flatulent. <laughs> I think. Oh, I mean, I mean, your fault. People, people have, as Liz was saying, like people have all these different abilities. Like a, you know, a character I like to, characters I like to recruit in the beginning, very much like Liz, I like to recruit like professional shoppers because they often have discounts on clothing, and you don't have much clothing at the beginning, and you want to customize your characters. The sooner you get them, the cheaper your clothes are, right? Like it's just, it's a smart investment, right? 
Um, I like to recruit HR professionals, believe it or not. What In what video game do you play an <laughs> HR professional? Well, in Watch Dogs Legion, if you get HR professionals, people are easier to recruit and you get more crypto when you, you get signing bonuses when you recruit them, which is awesome. So like you got to get them early because if you're going to recruit you know, 20 people, like you want to get that bonus 20 times instead of recruiting them last and then like, well, I'm kind of done, right? But uh, uh, but then, yeah, of course, there's, you know, there's people who are who are unlucky and they're going to drop dead at some point. And there's people who have a gambling problem. And as you're playing the game, you see them making bets with your money and like winning and losing it. There are people who come with guns and people who have cool cars and people who have crappy cars. And um, <laughs> and it's more like uh, and people who like to fight and are good at it and people who like to fight and are bad at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can kind of pick you can kind of pick characters to suit your play style. One of, one of my favorite um, things to do actually in the game is to go to the bare knuckle arenas. And if you, you, you know, find someone who's not a terrible fighter and go to the bare knuckle arenas and fight your way up the ladders, because after you beat the champion, then you have the ability to, to recruit all of the people that you fought in the ladder. And then the bare knuckle champions have lots of melee abilities. Like they have, uh, you know, they can take more damage and they do more damage and they have like staggering punches. And um, some of them have this ability called, uh, I forget what it's called, kinetic charger or whatever. So that the more they punch people, the faster it recharges their gadgets. So like it's uh, it's a really good like melee character. I like characters who, who like use melee a lot. So it's good for me. Usually when somebody lets one go in real life, there's sometimes a little dad joke that follows it or there's like a little, uh, you know, some some kind of something that's said. If it's a joke cracked from another person, like, did you pull from that in life as well? Are we going to have some fart jokes? Good question. There may be one or, one or two fart jokes in the game. I, uh, I'm i not at liberty to say how many, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can look okay. forward to some fart jokes. Okay, fair enough. If that's Please. your thing. We <laughs> Hey, uh, it definitely is my thing. Thanks so much for asking. Okay, great. Let's move on now. I will stop talking about this subject because my mother is already disappointed in me. Um, all right. London itself plays a role in Watch Dogs Legion, right? So we've been shown the authentic London with diverse populations, of course. So uh, Clinton, Liz, how did you two kind of bring this game to life? Like, how is this city playing probably the biggest character of all? I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off and hand it off. I think, you know, as you said, London is a London is a really diverse city. And I think we did a ton of research. Um, you know, we went there with, you know, at 20 plus people, um, one big research trip for three weeks or something. We were there, um, you know, going to different neighborhoods and meeting all kinds of people with behind closed doors access, really getting to know the city. Also, I think the government and Liz can talk more about that has a huge database um, of you know census data that we were also able to draw from. So mixing our knowledge uh, from being on the ground um, with with actually publicly available data, I think was a was a huge um, key to making London feel so um, so genuine. Yeah, I mean, um, we definitely looked at a bunch of demographic statistics. Um, not just for London or just for England, but like different boroughs, different areas of London to try to get the feel for all those boroughs. But like demographic data is really just like, this is just data. What does it actually mean? It doesn't actually tell the stories of individuals that you might find. Um, so we relied a lot on like all this sort of like qualitative experiences, right? Like this was the research trip. This was research that our team had done about London, um, but also like things like what kind of people so it's like, when we're looking at a diverse population of the city, we're trying to represent London. We're also trying to say, okay, well, you can play as anyone. So who are the kinds of people that you want to play as? Like, look at the fantasy characters of a Watch Dogs game. Let's make sure we include them. And then it's also like, well, what are the fantasy characters of like any individual player? Like, I love playing as a little old lady librarian on a moped with like a taser gun. And I'm happy with that. Um, can like what what are the kinds of things that people are talking about when we when we're looking at like who do you want to play as in the game who are the kinds of people that we want to make sure that we're populating london with um can a player find themselves in our world right like all those are sort of like questions that just stack on top of each other and what it means is that instead of just making like a London that just matches demographic data, we're actually looking at a London that is from top to bottom trying to make it as diverse but also rich mm -hmm. so it's like 
So like, yes, on the surface, like it's very, very diverse. And if you look and drill down into any given character, you're going to see a lot more of that diversity in terms of the depth that we put into like creating these characters, what kinds of characters, what kind of stories are the kinds of stories that people might have in our world and in our version of London. Right, and you just want to make it authentic to that city itself because you know like the harshest critics that you're going to get are going to be people oh, yeah. that live in that city. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Londoners would never tell us what they really think. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> too polite. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Yeah. You just put it out there. Okay, great. I love it. Uh, something that else. Uh, something else that plays a huge role, obviously, is the propaganda that we're going to see in game as well. Um, Cameron, how do you? I mean, I feel like there is a bit of writing that goes into it. Do you play a part in the writing of the propaganda, or was that someone else's job? Do you push it on someone else? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm definitely involved in the writing of the propaganda. Um, yeah, my team is anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, it was important to us that, um, like, this is a speculative London, right? It's not it's not London as it, as it really is. And we wanted to push, like Clint said, sort of some trends we see in the world to, to kind of, you know, crank it to 11 and and uh, see, see where that got us. And, um, yeah, I mean, one of those things was definitely that uh, in London there's a... Um, uh, sort of a, a, a battle for 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 people's uh, minds to kind of keep them uh, afraid uh, of each other, and um, um, this is largely being perpetrated by um, Albion, our sort of um, private military company that are sort of main bad guys in the story. So um, yeah, it was um, it was really interesting to put ourselves in the, the headspace of people who were trying to make people afraid and keep them in line, uh, and as well, it was important to us to to sort of come up with anti-propaganda uh, in our sort of street art and whatnot and how people and DeadSec would try to convince, try to sort of wake people up, try to um, um, kind of uh, activate people to uh, take their city back. So um, it was it was, it was was fun writing the uh, propaganda. I, I would imagine that you obviously pull from some real life inspo, like back in time. Did you guys just like, are you going through history books? Are you, are you looking at old <laughs> newspaper clippings? What do you, what do you go through? I think we can look at the news. <laughs> I know I didn't want to make it about real life right now, but okay, if we must. I mean, yeah, I think when we started thinking about this uh, five years ago, you know, the world was a pretty different place, and uh, and you know, uh, uh, a lot can change in five years. And I think as we were, you know, getting getting moving through production and things like Brexit started to happen, and and the world started to change rather rather radically, it became. Uh, uh, I think in some ways it helped us understand that the that the what we were doing in the beginning maybe wasn't certainly wasn't going far enough. Like the world wasn't um, problematic enough to motivate some of the players' uh, actions. And so I think we kind of took some tough lessons there and rolled with it. But then you know as we kind of got our footing and figured out what the game was about, um, the world kept getting a bit crazier all the time. And and I think uh, uh, in some ways ended up maybe even catching up with uh, with some of the some of the some of the fiction of our game so it's crazy times yeah that must have just blown you guys away at some points where you're just like you're making this game and it's kind of about these things but then you turn on the news and it's like wow okay it, like how was this happening how is this real and you just kind of like live when you live in your moment like you're living in your game and then you turn on the news is just uh wild i cannot wait to have that kind of visceral experience as well with this game because i feel like it might give us a little bit of that I think so. Yeah, yeah think okay. I'm like, will. can you confirm? Okay, I will leave you uh, uh, with one more question. But before I do that, I just want to let people know in the chat, you have any questions? It's cool. Uh, we're hanging out with you in this virtual Ubisoft industry night, okay? So just send the questions through. We're happy to partake in a little chat with you. Um, I Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I do have one more question for you because this is your baby and it's coming out soon and you've just been nurturing it for so long. So... How are you feeling right now? Your game is coming out tomorrow. No, I think we're, I think I'm I'm very excited. Um, as I said, you know, the last the last several months we've seen a lot of play tests on you know final and close to final versions of the games, and we're seeing a lot of very positive reaction. We're starting to see positive press in in previews and stuff like that. So uh, um, some of the butterflies kind of kind of go away a little bit with that. And I think um, you know it has been it, you know for me anyways. It's been five years, so. Um, there's a little bit of shell shock, uh, going on, but we'll see, uh, we'll see. It's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Like, uh, I, as you go through a five-year development process, a, a lot of what gets you through it is just imagining the day players get their hands on it. Right. Like, 
Uh, and so the fact that we're there is like, um, I have to kind of go back in time and, and sort of say to myself, Hey, like Cam from three years ago in the trenches, like it's going to be in people's hands and, uh, it was worth it, you know? So, I mean, yeah. that's pretty gratifying. I'm excited to see, uh, people share all the characters they recruit or don't recruit for whatever reason, characters they find that they want to share because for, for whatever reason, I just want to see what people are interested in because like during development over all these years, we've constantly had people share characters that they found or like, Liz, look at what spawned. Um, and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that person's amazing. You should murder them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm super curious to see what players are going to latch on to. And cause like, We've spent so much time working on the Play as Anyone system, and we still get things that surprise us. And now we're going to get a few million more people with their hands on the game all at once, suddenly all looking at these characters that are spawning and coming up with stories about them and like interacting with them. And like, I just want to see, I want to read all those player stories. I'm going to be like obsess uh, obsessively refreshing the internet, trying to find <laughs> screenshots and stories. Um, yeah, I know. I'm excited for this like fan created lore that I'm sure we're gonna see as well. Just pop up. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Dang, you guys. Thank you so much for joining thank me. You. Uh, thank yeah. You. Congratulations again, and uh, cannot wait to play this game tomorrow. Listen, don't go anywhere. Panel number two is coming up right after this.